As a statistician, the most well-used item in my toolkit is the humble average. It's the simplest but most powerful way to get a ready handle on a mass of confusing detail. What's so great about an average is that you can take a whole mass of data and reduce it to a single number. And though each of us is unique, our collective lives produce averages that can characterize whole populations. I looked in my local newspaper one week and saw a pensioner had accidentally put her foot on the accelerator and crushed her friend against a wall. Devastating, hideous, horrible thing to happen. And then there was a second one about a young man who didn't have a driving license was driving a car under the influence of drugs and alcohol and he bashed into a pedestrian, killed him. What's remarkable, absolutely remarkable, if you look at the number of people who die each year in traffic crashes, it's nearly a constant. What? All these individual events, somehow when you sum them all up, there's the same number every year. And every year, two and a half times as many men die in traffic crashes as women, and it's a constant. And every year, the rate in Belgium is double the rate in England. There are these remarkable regularities. So that these individual particular events sum up, sum up into a social phenomenon. Let's see what Sweden have done. We used to boast about fast social progress. That's where we were. In my lectures, to tell stories about the changing world, I use the averages from entire countries, whether the average of income, child mortality, family size, or carbon output. OK, I give you Singapore, the year I was born. Singapore had twice the child mortality of Sweden. It's the most tropical country in the world, a marshland on the equator, and here we go. It took a little time for them to get independent, but then they started to grow their economy, and they made the social investment. They got away malaria. They got a magnificent health system that beat both US and Sweden. We never thought it would happen that they would win over Sweden. <laughs> Useful as averages are, they don't tell you the whole story. On average, Swedish people have slightly less than two legs. This is because a few people only have one leg or no legs, and no one has three legs. So almost everybody in Sweden has more than the average number of legs. The variation in data is just as important as the average. To find out more about the joy of stats, visit the Open University's Open Learn website. <laughs>